here are our announcements for the week following March 27th. We are selling Easter lilies and mums in a variety of spring colors to adorn our worship space for Easter Sunday. There are order forms on the welcome desk in the Narfex. If you have a child aged 3 to 11, listen up. We are partnering with Appleton Rotary Club, the Appleton Breakfast Club, um, to have an Easter egg hunt on Saturday, April 16th uh, from 11 a.m. until 12 noon. Uh, if we are looking for a volunteer to come into church once a month to vacuum the building, if you are interested in doing that, please call the office. CTK will be serving a meal at Pillars on Tuesday, April 12th. We are currently looking for volunteers to serve and also for supplies for the spaghetti dinner itself. March 31st is the deadline to direct your Thrivent Choice dollars. See our newsletter for more details and help us get a new electronic sign out front. Check out Surrey International. 20% of your purchases of your purchase comes back to CTK and helps support our many ministries. There is a link for that in the newsletter as well. Need inspiration for your crazy week? Let us help you. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Look for the logo of Christ the King and then like us. Uh, our newsletter is packed with information about our church and things going on in the community. It is delivered directly to your email inbox on Thursday mornings. If you do not receive it, please let us know. Call us at 920-788-6492 and we will get you subscribed. Have a great week, everyone. Bye-bye. Good morning, Christ the King. Good to see you all, and to those of you who are online, a warm welcome to everyone, wherever you may be. It is good to see all of you as we are gathered here uh, in this fourth Sunday of Lent. Um, wow, we are moving right along, and, and thanks for the compliments of the purple this morning that I had on today. It's a good color, isn't it? <laughs> It's kind of fun and very festive, even in this reflective time, which we're not really doing the traditional Lent, uh, this Lenten season with the theme that we have, um, full to the brim, but we are hoping that we are gathering more for ourselves, our walk in our faith, and in order to share with one another along life's journey. As we move along, uh, one announcement I need to share with you is uh, Donna Prawl, one of our lifetime, our lifelong members uh, who would usually sit right over in this area, uh, passed away on Wednesday. Uh, her funeral will be tomorrow at 11 a.m., visitation 9 to 11 a.m. She will be dearly missed by many that she took care of uh, in her 40-some-odd years as a CNA at St. E's uh, and many others that she has reached out to through the years. So God bless Donna and all who will remember her tomorrow in her funeral service uh, as we gather here at Christ the King uh, to remember her gift of life that she shared with each and every one of us. A reminder, as we share communion this morning, I'm going to do it now instead of later. Hopefully all of you have your, your baggie for communion. Uh, when it is time for communion, we will bless the elements. And then for those who want to come forward, we will welcome you to do that. But we will bless uh, the elements for those who want to take it in their chair or in their seat. And then we'll invite those who wish to come forward for an individual blessing um, bring those as you wish. You can eat them while you're here and drink, or you can take them back to your seat to do that, whatever is most comfortable for you. But uh, please show your elements, and then we'll bless it. We won't touch it. We'll just bless it, and then you can head back to your seats. So we'll start with the middle aisle, or the middle sections coming to the middle aisle and around, and then we'll go to the outside, going to the outside, and then up and through. Hopefully that makes a lot of sense. And if anybody needs an individual blessing in their seat because they cannot come forward, we were, are happy to come back. Just let an usher know and we'll bless the elements where you are. 
those are the announcements this morning. Let's now take a few moments to collect ourselves, maybe a deep breath or two as we take it in. And we let it out. We prepare ourselves for God's blessings and for all that God has in store for us as we gather together for worship and as we do with our singing and our gathering song. Our Father, we have wandered. As you are able, let us stand and sing. We continue by sharing our confession together. When the Pharisees tried to stop Jesus, Jesus said, I will keep on. I will keep on healing. I will keep on teaching. I will keep on preaching. I will keep on flipping the tables of injustice. I will keep on treating every person like a child of God. I will keep on believing that this world can change. I will keep on and keep on and keep on until God's promised day. Forgive us, God, for the times when we stop. Amen. Receive now forgiveness, family of faith. The word prodigal can be defined as wasteful, or imprudent, hence the name prodigal son. However, prodigal can also be described as extravagance and excessive. Friends, we worship a prodigal God, a God who is extravagant in mercy and excessive in grace. For no matter how many times we run, no matter how far we go or how lost we get, God is standing at the end of the driveway waiting for us. The doors are open. The feast is for you. The grace is extravagant. Thanks be to God. Amen. We continue together by praying the prayer of the day. God of the covenant, in the mystery of the cross, you promise everlasting life to the world. Gather all peoples into your arms and shelter us with your mercy that we may rejoice in the life we share in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're going to remain standing. I think I figured it out because it's the reading of the gospel. Kayleen is coming down now to share that reading with us. Our gospel reading this morning comes from the book of Luke, chapter 15, verses 1 through 3, and 11b through 32. 
Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow worships or welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout the country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am, dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called, out, he called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours comes back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed and fatted the calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this, father of your, or this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. All right. Since you've heard this reading now, I need you all to fill this line. Prodigal son. Okay, very good. You're, you all were listening. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Uh, all of our songs today will be about wandering or straying from God, and uh, as we listen to this gospel today about the prodigal son, um, we all, I think, can relate to this parable that Jesus tells. Uh, we can relate to it in such a way that we might be the young son, we might be the older son, Or some of us might be the parents in this as well. Or perhaps there's other points of view that that you may be. We'll go to the next slide here. As we share in this, we think about uh, Jesus sitting here at a table. And in the context of our gospel today, we might say that he's having dinner with the disciples. But in the context here, Jesus is amongst all of the tax collectors and the sinners. All right, we don't think very highly of tax collectors and sinners when we think of the biblical uh, understanding here, but Jesus is with them, and there probably are some religious people around here too, the Pharisees and the scribes, because we hear that they are murmuring or they're grumbling or they're saying, oh, this Jesus, uh, he welcomes sinners and, and tax collectors and, and even eats with them. He, he welcomes them. 
Jesus is welcoming the religious people too uh, to be part of this as well. Uh, But they choose to not be seated at this table. Jesus is setting this example in these first few verses as he's sitting with sinners and tax collectors and eating with them. He has something to teach those who are there, including the Pharisees and the scribes who are listening in and grumbling, if you will, in the background. Jesus is going to teach three parables, and we know that this Luke chapter is known as the lost chapter in the Bible because there are three things that get lost in this chapter. A lost sheep, a lost coin, and a lost son, or we might even say sons. Both are lost for various reasons. And Jesus is going to talk about how the lost will be found, how the dead will become and be made alive when they are found. The first parable that Jesus tells is five verses. The next one is three. But this last one that we have heard is 22 verses long. A lot more to say about being lost as a son or as a child and what it means for us to be found. Jesus is welcoming everyone, not just the good religious people, tax collectors, sinners, you and myself, all of us are welcome around that table as Jesus gathers in to teach these parables and to share them with one another. We all know life can be fun and celebratory and we can reach those milestones and have some great times, but we also know life can be pretty complicated at times. The older I get, the more complicated it seems. We know that life can be messy. We know that we can maybe describe our lives as perhaps even a wreck. But no matter what, God's grace, God's grace is still there for all of us. God's grace is there for us to be, or for us to experience. And God's grace is present at this table with tax collectors and sinners, and the religious people, the Pharisees, and the scribes who are gathered there today. God's grace is never, ever out of reach. It is always there for you, no matter what it is you face in your day or in your life. It is important today, though, for us to understand prodigal son as you all filled in the line because that's how we understand prodigal to understand prodigal grace which was our welcome slide this morning what does it mean to be filled to the brim with prodigal grace well first maybe we need to understand the word prodigal so we're going to go to the the next slide that has a definition for you of what prodigal is as an adjective it's spending money or your resources and doing that freely recklessly and perhaps wastefully or even in an extravagant way or it's known as a person who spends their money in a reckless extravagant way that is the prodigal son He is being prodigal with what he has, but he's not being very wise about that. And so it is all going away. If we go to our next slide. We know that this prodigal son receives the inheritance and goes out and is going to get rid of everything that he has because he's just going to get rid of it freely, recklessly extravagantly, and probably in ways that are not looked upon very well. He realizes once it's all gone. And then add another layer to it, a famine hits the area where he's living, so no one's helping him or able to help him, and he is going hungry. If he doesn't do something, he's going to go hungry and die of not having enough to eat when he had his share of the inheritance. He had it all. So he comes to his senses and figures out, I need to work. 
And so in his working, he's figuring out that as he's working and giving slop to the pigs, the pigs are eating better than he is. So there's more revelation that is coming to this young son. He realizes that if I go back home, I can have a better life than what I'm having right now. I have really messed up. I have really fallen short. I have really made a mess of my life. I am no longer worthy as the words share in this. I'm no longer worthy to be called a son of my father. No longer worthy, at least he thinks, of the grace of God. So he comes up with the idea to confess. And here is one of the greatest points in this, is that this son is going to confess what he has done. Oh, I should have never asked for my inheritance. I was not ready to move out on my own. I have really done some poor, made some poor decisions in my life, and I have lost everything. But I still have my life. I still have my life and I'm going to confess before heaven and before you, my Father, that I have sinned. That is a great first step. Confession is important for us. We've done that already today in our worship. It is one of those uh, uh, wonderful things that we do in our worship as Lutherans, confessing our sins before God and being right in this time of worship before we receive that holy meal. That meal that strengthens and nourishes our soul and our spiritual lives for when we are sent, we are able to go out and to proclaim that forgiveness we are given by God in our lives. So this son confesses and makes up this plan of what I'm going to say when I return, and I'm going to share this with my father, and I'm going to share this before heaven, that I have messed up royally. And so he's on his way. Our theme, Full to the Brim, is about prodigal grace. It's about that extravagance. It's about that excessiveness. It's about giving all of that, if you will, to God, to one another, to live our lives in such a way that is illogical, hard to understand, but yet it is one in which we are called to follow as children of the faith, being inheritors and experiences, experiencers, if you will, of that grace that is given to us. Grace is never earned. It is given. Grace is never earned. It is given to each and every one of us. Grace is given and then it is experienced by the one who is receiving and the one who is giving. We experience grace grace. I'm going to encourage each of you to think of a time when someone offered that forgiveness to you when you said you were sorry or someone who gave you that grace and you didn't even ask or say you were sorry. If you've lived long enough, I think that you can identify a time when you really messed up and you can give thanks for the person who gave you grace upon grace to allow you to still be in relationship and to, to, give you, um, to give you what you need. I mean, I think as a son, and I'm, one of the, I'm the youngest son in my family, right? I was given grace often by my parents, by my brothers and my sister. We are called to be grace givers in our lives, but confessing is that great place and that great important part of our Lutheran liturgy that we do each week as we prepare to understand what it is to receive that prodigal grace, extravagant, excessive, illogical, but yet given. Grace, again, never earned. It is given. It is experienced. We'll move to the next side, slide. And as we shared about prodigal, I did not share number two here because we usually stop at number one. 
But the second understanding of prodigal is having or giving something on a lavish scale. Generous, lavish, liberal. We'll continue to the next one because that is what prodigal grace is all about. It gives lavishly, undeservingly, and it gives without limits. Each of us receives that from God. Each of us is called in a life of faith to be able to give grace to those around us in times when those uh, people around us mess up. None of us is perfect. None of us gets out of this without ever sinning. We do fall short. We fall short of God. We fall short of one another and the expectations of this world. If we can't live with that prodigal grace, we need some time to think about that, to ponder how it is that we experience that in our days and how we can give it to others because without grace, none of us is worthy of this life that we live. So we go from prodigal son to prodigal grace. We all have lived as prodigal children, but we can also extend that prodigal grace in our daily living. We'll go on to the next. So how might you receive, how might you extend prodigal grace today? Is there someone, something in which you could extend grace to Is there grace that you are needed from someone else? That prodigal grace is amazing. We'll continue on. So today, as we think about prodigal grace, excessive, extravagant, illogical, lavish, overabundance, overwhelming, overflowing, Let us be able to go forth to experience God's prodigal grace without limits with the people in our lives. It is is shared freely amongst one another. By the grace of God, we do that as children of God, sharing that prodigal grace as God has bestowed it on us through the Son, Jesus, who died for us, willingly sacrificing Amen. We'll continue with our full to the brim prodigal grace sermon song that's next. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. As you are able, let us stand and sing. Jesus 
is calling, calling, O sinner, come home. Oh, for the wonderful love he has promised, promised for you and for me. mercy and pardon, pardon for you and for me. Come home, come home. You are weary, come home. Earnestly Tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O oh sinner, come home. Together, let us affirm our faith through these words. We believe in a God who waits in the driveway for us. We believe in a God who leaves the porch lights on and throws a feast when we are found. We believe in a God who doesn't stop looking for us when we get lost. We believe in a God of prodigal grace, excessive, extravagant, over-the-top grace. In response to this grace, we hold tighter to each other. We remember that humans are not meant to go through life alone. So we look for ways to welcome each other in, to live like we are family, and to lead with grace, excessive, extravagant, over-the-top grace. We believe that this is our call. Amen. We will sing our prayer song through one time, offer our prayers, and then sing it one more time. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Draw close to the heart of God through the prodigal grace that we are given. Let us now pray for the church, for the world, and for all who are in need. Jesus, you form the disciples in ways of extravagant mercy and profound welcome. As you welcome tax collectors and sinners, and even the Pharisees and scribes and the religious, we ask that you lead your church to be a community marked by confession and forgiveness, hospitality and celebration, and help us to transform this world through your prodigal love as we are plagued by fear and condemnation. Gracious God, you make the land to produce a harvest that sustains your entire creation. We ask that you equip farmers and farm workers who till the soil, nourish this earth with spring rainfall and abundant sunshine, heal grounds tainted by pollution and misuse. We pray that we might be stewards of all that you provide, that we share that abundance with one another gracefully and faithfully. Gracious God, as countries are divided and leaders harbor grudges, reconcile nations that experience conflict, 
especially we pray for Ukraine. Act quickly to bring an end to war. Anoint peacemakers trained in the arts of diplomacy and foster a spirit of collaboration among political rivals. Thank you for the many, many countries who open up their borders, their cities, their homes to those who are refugees and who need a place to escape their trauma so that they might rest and experience that prodigal grace in what lies ahead. Gracious God, your people cry for help in times of distress. Resolve disagreements among family members. Save those experiencing financial hardship. Hear our prayer for those who are sick or grieving the loss of a loved one. Console us with the promise that everything can become new. Gracious God, your love comes on when the table is set and a feast is prepared. Bless the feeding ministries that happen not only here in this area of the world, but throughout the world. Bring an end to hunger in our community and around the world. We take a few moments now to offer those prayers aloud or in the silence of our hearts. The one who was dead is alive again. We give thanks to those who have died, confident that steadfast love surrounds them. Shelter them in your love until we are gathered into your heavenly banquet and accept the prayers that we bring, O God, on behalf of the world in need. For the sake of Jesus Christ, may we say amen. Amen. Lord, listen to your children pray. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. The peace of Christ be with you always. We take a few moments to share that peace with one another. It is so fun to see how this piece gets longer and longer and longer as we go. This is awesome. Thanks, everyone, and to those of you at home, God's peace to all of you, and I hope that you were able to exchange those hugs and handshakes uh, as you're able. As before we begin the great Thanksgiving, we remember that as we share in this table the meal of the altar, Jesus' body and blood. We know that this is Christ's table, not our table. It is a table where all are welcome, where all are uh, privileged to receive that prodigal grace. It is a place where we extend that to each and every one as we share in that today. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup 
is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. So before we eat and before we drink, we remember the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray and continues to teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For those who are having communion in your seat, the body of Christ given for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. Congregation may be seated. For those wishing to come forward for an individual blessing, come at the direction of the usher, and I invite the communion assistants to please come forward now at this time. receive this blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. May we say amen. 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 As you are able, let us stand and sing our sending song sent forth by God's blessing.
Sent forth by God's blessing, our true faith confessing, the people of God from this dwelling take leave. The supper is ended, oh, now be extended, the fruits of this service in all who believe. The seed of Christ teaching, receptive souls reaching, shall blossom in action for God and for all. Your grace shall incite us, your love shall unite us to work for your kingdom and answer your call. With praise and thanksgiving to God ever living, the tasks of our everyday life our faith ever sharing, in love ever caring, embracing God's children, the whole human race. With your feast, he still feed us, you all now lead us, unite us as one in this life that we share. Then may all the living with praise and thanksgiving give honor to Christ and his name that we bear. Congregation, congregation may be seated. I need your prodigal grace today. Uh, because we have all of our council members here, most of them, and it is our day to install them. Pastor did not put it into the uh, outline for today. Uh, so please, uh, let's take just a couple of moments and invite the council to come forward. If you will go to the uh, podium over here and state your name and if you are an officer of the church and then take a spot here um, facing the congregation. Good morning, Carrie Bean. Kristen Heller. Good morning, Trent Wright. Good morning, Sonia Dearson, and I'm honored to be your president this year. <laughs> I'm, uh, Chad Leader, I'm the vice president. Sue Kersisnik. Uh, good morning, Paul Westbrook. All right, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, Kelly Viles is our council secretary as well, and I'm not sure, Ed Albrent, where is Ed today? Oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, we miss Ed as well uh, today, and Pastor Dar, of course, and myself are on council. Uh, so thank you for your willingness to serve, uh, for answering that call to say yes, to be leaders of this congregation and to be the, the ones uh, who make some difficult decisions at times, uh, and in many other ways, very grace-filled ones and very joyful ones as well along the journey of the church and our lives of faith. We give thanks for your call and for that call uh, of the church to respond. And so uh, we offer a prayer and then we will formally have them all be installed. So let us pray. Gracious God, your blessings flow through this congregation, through every uh, partner that we have, whether they be long or whether they are new for the first time. And we give thanks for our council here who has been voted upon and called upon and has answered the call in which to serve on our congregational council. We ask for your blessing upon decisions and upon each person as we meet and as we gather to discuss uh, the needs of ministry, the needs of your church, and the needs of our community. Bless our decisions that they might be uh, righteous in your sight and that we might continue uh, following uh, your path as you direct and guide this congregation and each and every one of us, and especially our council. These things we pray, and whatever else it is you see we need, we ask that you grant through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. May we all say, Amen. 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 At this time, 
you are fully installed now as our 2022 council here at Christ the King, and we give thanks for your gifts and blessings today. Can we turn to your seats. Now, congregation, if you can stand, and we will share in our uh, benediction and our sending. And uh, as you are able, those, uh, grab, your, grab the hand and reach out to those who are extended across the aisle or down the, uh, the row from you as we share in this benediction. You are children of God marked with the cross of Christ forever and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, majestic, motherly, and mighty, Bless you this day and always. May we say amen. 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 Go in peace. Jesus meets you on the way while you bring God's love to life. Thanks be to God.